Austin Talley Moore, pictured top left, originally began working with Stryker in the 1940s. He developed the grandfather of all hemi hips, the Austin Moore Endo, in 1950. Pictured top right is Fred Thompson. He soon followed Austin Moore's development with the F.R. Thompson Endo. Dr. Thompson also served as Chief of Orthopedics at St. Luke's Hospital, New York City. Hemiarthroplasty endoprosthesis products were designed primarily to treat displaced garden fractures type 3 and 4. Garden type 3 and 4 femoral neck fractures occur primarily in the elderly and significantly compromise blood flow to the femoral head and that is why a hemi-hip arthroplasty is the treatment of choice in these patients. Stryker has two world-class endo products in its portfolio. The Stryker UHR Bipolar has a clinical track record of global success for over 40 years. The Unitrax monopolar design follows Dr. Moore's philosophy of unipolar treatment. Please review these six points for proper preparation of a heavy hip. All implant resources need to be reviewed thoroughly before the case. Bring all the implants to the operating room area. Then work with the circulating nurse and bring select sizes into the room. Most striker heavy arthroplasty cases will require three trays. The UHT tray, a stem basic tray, and a stem brooch tray. There are some other optional trays which we will discuss in a moment. The retractors pictured here are commonly used in hemi hips. It's important that the Dole Miles tray and the implants are readily available. All cement mixing equipment must be ready before the case begins. The UHT tray contains trial heads with two different tapers, the V40 and the C taper. They are pictured on the top left photo. Work closely with the surgical technician to select the correct head for the case you are doing. Move the other style heads to the bottom tray. It should be noted that the trial heads in the stem trial tray will not work with the UHT gray endo trial heads. While setting up the case is a good time to work with the surgical technician and practice assembling a variety of the striker instruments that you will be using in this case. The unipolar ring head endo trial is a good example. So are snapping brooches into brooch handles, reamers into the gun, things of that nature. The saw blade must be loaded and the power confirmed. The correct striker adapter needs also to be loaded and power confirmed. This picture illustrates the typical sequence for a heavy hip procedure. Starting with number one on the left, neck cutting guide. Number two, corkscrew. Number three, measure the head. Number four, trial the head. Number five, box chisel for the femur. Number six, start all. Number seven, brooch. Number eight, trial. Number nine, implant the stem. Number ten, impact the endo head. Preoperative surgical templating helps determine stem size, stem position, neck angle, and neck cut. The neck resection guide should be positioned using anatomical landmarks determined during the preoperative templating. Care should be taken to align the vertical axis of the body of the guide with the femur. <laughs> Thank you.
measure the femoral head as soon as practical. The size of the head not only tells you the acetabular trial, but also gives you an indication of how big the stem might be. It's important to position the box osteotome laterally. This will allow proper axial positioning of the starter awl and brooches. Insert the axial starter reamer by hand on the T-handle into the canal to the appropriate depth. Start with the size zero brooch. Proceed until proper press fit is achieved. The brooches should always be advancing. There are two circumferential grooves at the top that help you confirm this. On this saw bone, we could not advance the number six brooch. And we still had not achieved proper stability. In cases like this, back down one or two sizes. That will create a pathway for the proper size brooch. The femur we are working with today is quite large. We knew we were going to have to progress through the system to achieve proper press fit. We found the number seven to be the appropriate size. Three indications that help confirm the proper size has been achieved include a change of pitch between mallet blows, increased resistance of forward advancement of the brooch, and using the brooch handle to confirm rotational stability as demonstrated in this clip. Warning, failure to operate the Calcar planer in accordance with the specific instructions found in the surgical technique may result in damage to the femur. The instruments pictured here should be out of their trays, familiar to the surgical technician, and ready for use. Extracting the fractured femoral head can be a challenge to even an experienced surgeon. The ligamentum teres often is the culprit. It tethers the head to the acetabulum. The red arrow is pointing to the ligament in the top right of this picture. Thread the corkscrew into the femoral head. A light mallet tap can assist with the thread engagement. There are a variety of forceps supplied by the hospital in their total hip or ortho major trays. These can assist in extracting the femoral head. Measurement of the extracted femoral head is often performed by the surgical technician. Proper use of the striker head gauge will help ensure an accurate measurement. We like to load two trials, the size measured and one millimeter smaller.
please refer to individual stem surgical techniques for more information.